We're coming to you from the Global Washington Annual Conference, Smarter Approaches to a Changing World, here at the Bell Harbor Conference Center in Seattle, Washington. So, Renee Kaplan from the Skoll Foundation. First off, what, is, what do you do at Skoll? I'm the Chief Strategy Officer at the Skoll Foundation. So I oversee programs, of, you know, how we invest in social entrepreneurs, then also think about where we're going in the future. So is it more charity or is it entrepreneurship in today's world? We see a combination. So our approach is social entrepreneurship, which is taking the best ideas and innovations and kind of approaches from a business entrepreneurship and marrying that with the social impact that NGOs and other nonprofits bring. So we want to fund in the middle, of really looking for those organizations that have an idea to change the world that are mostly nonprofits. Some are hybrid, but that also use business approaches and markets to help transform those outcomes. I know this is probably a silly question, but uh, why would a Bay Area entity want to be at a Global Washington conference? Well, I think it's phenomenal when uh, local organizations within states think globally. So how can we harness, and I think Seattle area and Washington in particular has a lot of resources, a lot of great opportunities to really be a spotlight of what good organizations that are working on the ground can do at a global level. So we encourage that and want to see more of that in, throughout the states. Are you seeing more of that in Seattle, Washington? I think so, yeah, I think so. I think that clearly there's some you know, world-leading foundations, you've got funders, you've got new, young philanthropists coming up um, that we want to shape and influence and how they give. So I think that's also an opportunity here, um, similar to, to the Bay Area where School Foundation is based. And, and the School Foundation itself is part of the new, young philanthropy. It's different than philanthropy of 50 years ago. Yeah, I think so. We consider ourselves, we've been around 15 years, um, but our, co our founder, uh, Jeff Skoll from eBay, really looked at the, his entrepreneurship background and believed that if we were going to change some of these big social problems, that it would take, it would be by entrepreneurship ideas, innovations. And social entrepreneurship was a you know, concept and an approach we chose and now is much more mainstream. Um, but we are, yeah, we find that a lot, a lot of uh, philanthropists, a lot of new organizations today really are thinking like social entrepreneurs, which is fabulous. But it's not always easy though, is it? I mean, there are still very difficult problems in the world. Yeah. At the same point in time, there are successes. Can you tell us a little of both? Sure. Um, I think, you know, one of the, obviously the biggest challenges for organizations, we have 87 organizations in our portfolio working in 131 countries and um, huge challenges with funding, huge challenges with um, corruption, bureaucracy, when you're working on the ground in places like Nigeria, in China, where there's just, um, philanthropy may not be as advanced as it is here in the States. So I think that's a big area for us to crack in the next decade and beyond. How are we making it easier for entrepreneurs to succeed and help their communities? Um, and then I think from a success factor, we're seeing a lot of success with um, whether it's work, women and girls. There's, I think, a huge trend for really recognizing the power of investing in women and girls um, and what that, how that can transform a community with education and health and long-term uh, economic improvement. I think there are also big successes we've seen in technology and how we're using technology to help um, kind of accelerate social services on the ground. So whether it's mobile phones being used for with you know, by community health workers to help in rural villages, whether it's global satellites being used to track deforestation or the sea, uh, you know, species. I think um, those things we're really excited and inspired by. One of the things that you mentioned at the very beginning was about the successes that are happening in women and girls or, yeah. around the world. Um, at the same point in time when you know we see evidence from the Middle East that it's not a pretty picture. Right. Um, how, how can that success happen from the outside, or can it? Yeah. You know, our belief, and I think my personal belief, is that it has to, has to be, it can be influenced from the outside, but it has to start from within. The real change makers are the folks that are on the ground, that are living it day to day, that know their communities the best, know what works in their specific communities and cultures. Mm -hmm. Without that, nothing changes. So for us, we see, in the area of women and girls particularly, whether it's 
ending female genital you know, mutilation or ending child marriage in India and places where it's still very common, um, it starts with community leadership. Men and women coming together, potentially with outside resources and help mm. and education that can transform their community bit by bit and grow it. The UN's Millennium Development Goals are due to end in 2015 and they're looking yeah. at, at some new things, but Skoll Foundation too. Yeah. Uh, if you were to look ahead five years, what do you think you would see from Skoll Foundation? Well, we hope um, that uh, the entrepreneurs that we support, and you know, we're very fortunate to work with these 87 organizations that are working around the world, we want to see really um, transformative shifts in the status quo. Um, so if you look at the status quo with women and girls, child marriage being one of them, we think it's possible to end child marriage by 2030. So not quite 10 years, five years, but we think it's possible. Um, I think there'll be great strides. We see a lot of opportunity with agriculture and farming. You know, getting loans, being able to look at aggregated farmers, smallholder farmers, really empowering them and giving them access to capital to help them grow their economy. So whether it's in Africa, Latin America, you know, funneling resources there, it seems like you know, we see a big shift in the next five years. We think they'll be much more produced and help the economy too. Renee, thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Appreciate it.